I am Hungarian, and I remember that when I grew up, I was surrounded by tech from European companies. Uh, there were phones from Finnish Nokia, from German Siemens, from French Alcatel, from Swedish Ericsson. Uh, there were TVs from uh, Dutch Philips, and just much, much more. But now, in 2017, most of that seems to be gone. So where did all the European tech companies go? Well, I'm Martin from TechAlta. You're watching the 24th episode of the Story Behind series. And let's find out. When I had this thought, my first question was whether there really is a tech deficit in Europe or if it's just my brain making it up. So I started searching and I limited my search for the sake of brevity to only consumer facing technologies. So smartphones and I don't know, search engines, yes, uh, industrial automation and uh, accounting software, not so much. And here's what I found. Consumer electronics hardware companies are basically non-existent in Europe. There are zero major European companies making PCs or gaming consoles, and things aren't much better for smartphones either. There is HMD making Nokia phones again, and a few niche brands exist as well, but all of those combined don't sell as many phones as a B-grade Chinese phone brand alone. Since Philips sold off its TV business, Europe also has no mainstream TV or monitor brands left either. Audio hardware seems to be doing a little better with a few major brands like German Sennheiser still left, but here too European brands are vastly outnumbered and many, like Austrian AKG, are being sold off to outside competitors. The camera market remains dominated by Japanese and American companies, and Europe is barely even in the race with new hardware categories like smartwatches, VR and AR hardware, or consumer drones. And even on the component level, there are close to no European companies at all. So while there are a few European success stories, I think it is safe to say that in all the major categories, European consumer electronics hardware companies are far, far, far behind their competitors from the US or Asia. I would say the situation is somewhat better with software and online services, though there's a big problem here as well. I think it helps to break this category down into three layers infrastructure, platforms, and end consumer applications. Infrastructure is the backbone of the internet, and it includes everything from cloud computing to content distribution networks and even domain name services. And there are no European companies here that reach a global scale. Obviously, geographical distances mean that, I don't know, local hosting companies exist everywhere, but American companies dominate on a global level, with potential competitors only really emerging from China, not from Europe. And that's mostly because China is basically an impenetrable bubble. I've made a separate video about the Chinese bubble that you can watch right here. The platform layer consists of software that enables other software and services to run, and I'll include things like operating systems, web browsers, app stores, search engines, and even social media networks here. If you want to build an app, you have to deliver them through these platforms. And once again, US companies dominate the industry here. There is not a single major European platform in any of these categories, and the only potential challenges, once again, come from China. In the end user application layer, you know, the stuff that runs on top of these other two layers, European companies have actually managed to build quite a few successful products. Here are just a few that come to my mind. And while that is genuinely great, there is a catch here as well scale. All of these European success stories come from companies that develop either a single product or very few of them. They are specialists. In the meanwhile, in the US and China, on top of these specialists, there are also five plus three companies that I'll just call general purpose tech giants. Companies that just do thousands of things at once and buy up hundreds of startups a year. Europe has zero companies like that. So Europe has a lot of little fish, but no big fish. In summary, Europe is barely involved with the infrastructure or the platforms layer of software and services. And while it does have some success stories with end user stuff, it lacks the all round tech giants. So the tech deficit is real. But why? Why don't Europeans just build more successful tech companies? I think this breakdown actually explains a lot. This layer, the consumer facing layer, is the only one at which Europe seems to be well, at least moderately successful. What's different about it compared to the others is that, quite frankly, there's room for thousands, if not tens of thousands of companies here. The more apps and games, the merrier. Anyone with a good idea and a few smart people can sort of create a cool app from their dorm room, regardless of whether these developers come from Europe or the US or India or wherever. 
With platforms and infrastructure though, there's just much less room and with it, less diversity. The world will really only adopt a few operating systems, a few search engines, a few global cloud computing platforms, and so on. Everything happens at a much, much larger scale with tens of thousands of employees per platform. Suddenly having a good idea and a bunch of smart people doesn't get companies anywhere. They also need the right macroeconomic environment, lots of investors who are willing to give them money, relaxed taxation and privacy laws, an endless pool of highly educated people that they can hire and fire as efficiently as possible, and so on. And this is the key problem, I think. Europe is falling behind with a few of these. There are educated and entrepreneurial people with great ideas who can build great things. The end user layer proves that, but this just isn't enough to reach the heights of Google and Co. So I think there are five main reasons for this lack of competitiveness. Regulation, investment climate, geography and demographics, the attitudes of common European citizens towards technology and the lack of strong startup ecosystems. And of course, I will have to generalize a lot because of course, these metrics vary quite a bit across Europe. Still, starting with the first one, it is fairly safe to say that European legislation, especially when compared to that of the US or say China, isn't ideal for tech companies. Taxes are high, which is a straight competitive disadvantage. Labor laws are probably the strictest in the world, making it hard for companies to hire and fire people, which is especially difficult for tech companies where fluctuations are huge and companies would have to hire and fire all the time to adapt to the rapidly changing environment. Privacy laws are some of the strictest in the world too. Companies like Google or Facebook, whose core business is to gather every click and every scroll of their users, are constantly fighting European legislators even now. And having a European company do this on the same scale would be difficult to say the least. And lastly, there's also a lot of consumer protection regulation and red tape. So companies spend a ton of resources on compliance instead of spending it on beating competitors. The investor climate in Europe is also behind that of the US and China, which is especially important for startups. It's harder for European startups to raise money, especially once they grow a little larger. As an example, Fortune found that in 2015, European tech startups were funded at a lower revenue multiple of 2.6 versus 3.9 on the US side. So in general, money is tighter. And then there's simple geography. Launching global services just makes more sense in large homogenous markets like the US or China first, where an application can reach scale very quickly. Doing so in Europe would require adapting the product to 30 languages, legal systems and cultures right away. Just imagine if a voice assistant like Alexa launched in Europe first. That just wouldn't make any sense. And then there's also something much more subtle. I can't really quantify this, but Europeans in general just tend to be really pessimistic about both technology and business. That's why labor and privacy laws are so strict. When I lived and worked in China, I was constantly surprised by how most people I met there were genuinely excited that new tech companies would solve their problems. Because here in Europe, most people I know think of tech companies as the cause for most of our problems, not the solution to them. And this attitude makes the adoption of new technologies way slower here than in much of the rest of the world. Now, my last reason would be the lack of strong existing startup ecosystems. It turns out that exposing people to existing and thriving ecosystems like Silicon Valley and Shenzhen just organically gets them to build new startups. And as Europe was a little slower at adopting a lot of tech trends, and as it is very decentralized, there just aren't any Silicon Valley or Shenzhen sized startup hubs anywhere in Europe yet. It's a chicken and an egg problem. Uh, more tech just creates more tech and less tech creates less tech. Anyway, I think those five reasons combined explain why there are no global tech giants here in Europe. It's just harder to finance, harder to hire and fire people, and harder to reach people at scale here in Europe, which means that we can build specialists, but not all round tech giants yet. And the lack of homegrown giants also has a pretty major side effect. New technologies that are pioneered by specialists often end up being acquired by the giants. In startup terms, this is called an exit, and most founders and investors love exits, because it means that they can finally cash in on their investments. Problem is, Europe doesn't have any giants, so most European exits are going to non-European giants. Exits in Europe are a constant brain drain.
And that's kind of my conclusion. I think tech is often struggling to grow really big in Europe, and when it does, it often gets acquired by foreign giants. Now, I know I have so far sounded pretty gloomy, but there's another way to look at this whole situation as well. A lot of what's bad for companies can be good for people. I mean, there are tons of benefits to being a European citizen. Again, this is a generalization, but Europeans tend to have longer holidays. I have 27 days here in Berlin, for example, and I only had five when I worked in China. Less income inequality. According to Wikipedia, and yes, I'm quoting them, deal with it, Europe is about as equalitarian as it gets. Better unemployment benefits if it ever comes to that. Relatively cheap universal healthcare. High quality education that is free or at least much cheaper than whatever is available in the US especially. Great and usually cheap public transportation. Better privacy, stronger consumer protections, a protected environment and so on. So whether you think these things are ultimately worth not having an ultra competitive tech environment for will ultimately depend on your priorities. In either case, I think it's important to know what the trade-offs are that we are making. Anyway, I would like to hear why you think Europe has lost its lead in technology. I've actually put together a poll over at Twitter. You can find it in the description of this video. So make sure you go there, you cast your vote, and while you're at it, make sure to follow me on my social media channels. If you want to see more videos like this one from the Story Behind series, then be sure to subscribe to me on YouTube and also watch my previous episodes because they're all still relevant. All right, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.